Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Friday. Hope you liked the Liberia episode. All right, first order of business, I gotta fix some of the mistakes I made in the video. Okay, number one, the Pingyan footprint is not in Liberia, it's in China. It's not even remotely close to Liberia, like, I don't know how that got in the video. Number two, in the opening, I said that Liberia is one of the two African states that never got colonized. I should have specified a little bit more. I meant not colonized by any Western or European power. Technically, African Americans or the Americo Liberians colonized the country, but it could also be kind of seen as like repatriation. It really kind of depends on how you look at it. Also, I should have specified a little bit more when I was talking about the units of measurement. I meant to say it is one of the only three countries that does not use the metric system. Not all three, Myanmar, Liberia, and US use the imperialist system. System. Myanmar does not use the imperial system. They use their own native units of measurement. For example, a kata is about four fifths of a mile or 1.2 kilometers, and a ngase ta is about two pounds or 880 grams. It's it's weird. It's a weird system. Also, I didn't expound on how there were a lot of violent acts during the Civil War years. Everything from former President Charles Taylor escaping prison, then being trained by the Gaddafi regime, capturing and torturing former President Doe to death, and supposedly recording himself chewing on the severed ear of said former president. Then there was this guy, Joshua Milton Blahi, also known as General Butt Naked. He went into battle with his troops either naked or wearing Halloween costumes or dresses to confuse the enemy. Him and his troops practice a series of human sacrifice and cannibalism. I wish I was joking, but these are actual documented incidents. Yeah, the 80s, 90s, and 2000s were a crazy time. Oh, that and lots of countries register their ships under Liberia to avoid taxes. Liberia is the second most popular flag of convenience after Panama in terms of foreign registration. And uh, speaking of flags, we gotta jump into it. So without further ado... <laughs> freed slave African Americans recolonizing a part of Africa. No other country has that kind of story. You'll start to understand the flag a little bit more when we explain. So let's jump into it. The flag of Liberia contains 11 alternating horizontal bars of red and white with a small blue square in the upper left or Canton corner with a single white star in it. The red and white stripes stand for the 11 signatories of the Liberian Declaration of Independence as well as courage and moral excellence. The white star represents the first western styled republic in Africa whereas the blue square represents the African continent. The flag closely resembles and was modeled after the United States as the country was founded and established by freed slaves mostly from the United States along with some in the Caribbean funded by the American Colonization Society. Now that was cool and fun whatever yada 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 but one of the most fun and notable and symbolic images of Liberia would have to be the infamous county flags. I'm not even joking this is what they look like. Many vexillologists and design experts have kind of a hard time looking at them because they have uh, they portray a little bit of a what's the nicest way I can put this um they look kind of um childish in their aesthetic technique. For example, the odd unequally shaped trees of Bomi County, the Lofi County and its dismembered arm holding a rod and the gradient seems to overlap the fingers. The river coming out of the tree and floating trees in the sky for the River Gi County. There's Maryland County's lighthouse with random unequal light streaks and a floating roof and this thing for Nimba County. Now, of course, each of these flags has a reason and backstory behind the imagery, so I get it. And I'm going to be honest, I like these flags. I don't what the experts say, I think they're kind of charming. But anyway, yeah, moving on. The coat of arms. The coat of arms contains a shield with a 19th century ship representing the ships that brought the Americo Liberians to the country. Under it is a plow and shovel representing dignity of labor and hard work. The rising sun represents the birth of a new nation. The palm tree, which symbolizes prosperity. The white dove with a scroll meaning peace. And above and below everything, two banners. The top reading, the love of liberty brought us here. And the bottom reading, Republic of Liberia. And keep in mind, both the flag and coat of arms arms have pretty much stayed the same since the country's inception. All right, so that's pretty much about it. Uh, you know what time it is, geography fan mail time. So yeah, over the weeks, uh, we got a lot of stuff. By the way, guys, before we go into this, you guys are totally free and welcome to send any kind of fan mail or letters or packages to any of the other people that have been on Geography Now. You can send stuff to Noah or Ken or Keith or Caleb, you know, my triple K guy, the KKK. For oh, oh, yeah. But yeah, no, you can send anything to those guys as well. As usual, you know how we start. Letters and postcards. Filippo, thank you for sending this from Mantova, Italy. Austin sends this from the Bahamas. Bear sends this from Budapest, Hungary. Thank you, Lindsay from Delano, Florida. Lassi is from Slovakia, and uh, he sends this from Andorra. Matt sends this from Switzerland. Marta sends this from Riga, Latvia. I'm sorry, I can't really quite read your name, but this is really cool. You sent it from Rajasthan, India. Oh, this is really cool. I actually met this guy in Northern Ireland on my heritage trip. Fons, who is Galician, I believe. 
believe. I think he sent this from uh, Southern Italy. I uh, got a letter from Denmark. Hey Barbs, we are two Danish girls, Anya and Gun Gunwar? Gunwar? Yeah, good luck trying to pronounce that. Okay, yeah, she actually wrote that. Here's some more foreign currency. We got it from our parents' travels. You said you got these from your parents' travels? Like, did you? Get their permission to send these. And uh, Danish flags. Wah! All right, well, you know what? I'm gonna have to do this for the rest of the episode. All right, Sam from Israel. Uh, obviously, he sends an Israeli flag. And he also sends this. It's called a RAR card, which is like a metro card you can use to get on public transportation. Uh, I believe Ruta from Lithuania. Sent a Lithuanian flag. Okay, this is pretty cool. Rabi, who is Syrian, but lives in Belgium. He sent this, which he says is a Syrian straw used to drink something they call mate. You know, this looks very eerily similar to a yerba mate spoon straw. Is this, are you sure this isn't just a yerba mate straw thing? I think it might be. Uh... Owen from Alameda, California. Woohoo, my fellow Californian. Ah, oh, you sent a California flag. Ah, oh, home. He said his heritage is from many different countries, mostly from Italy and also specifically Sicilia, Sicily. And of course, uh, he sent those flags. Woohoo. All right, Jay Preston from Tucson, Arizona. I am from the Tohono O Odom nation that straddles the U.S. and Mexican border. Oh, that's cool. The reservation is about the size of the state of Connecticut. The man in the maze is a very important symbol to the O Odom. It basically symbolizes the journey through life. And uh, that's the man in the maze symbol he was talking about. I've said it so many times. If you come to the U.S., one thing you really have to kind of get the opportunity to immerse yourself in is the native culture. And I always encourage people that come here to at least try to find a reservation and meet these people and talk to them. Uh, thank you, Fran and JJ from Guatemala City. They sent these uh, Guatemalan quetzals. If you guys haven't watched the Guatemala episode, I highly recommend it. Guatemala is fascinating. It's one of the only few places in Central America that retains such a high population of indigenous people. Uh, next, Josie from Minnesota. My birth state. Hey, Barbs, my name is Josie. I am from Minnesota. Oh, you betcha in Minnesotan accent. Oh, my God. P.S. Tell Keith his hair is amazing. <laughs> you guys all love Keith, and I don't blame you. That guy is lovable. And uh, she sends a uh, Minnesota shirt. Yes, you got my size right. Men's medium. Oh, you were listening. If you guys get my size right, I will wear your shirts. All right. There you go, Josie. Uh, this is interestingly shaped. It's from Daniel from Iceland. Iceland flag. I really liked your episode and your pronunciations of Icelandic places were... I don't know if you could read it, but first he wrote, great, good, they were okay, and then he crossed it all out. Uh, let's see, Craig from Canada. Oh, this is the guy that sent me the stuff from Tristan Dacuna. Craig, I still have your shirt. I'm sorry, it's like three sizes too big, but I, I still have it. Oh, that's cool. So he actually sent a lava rock from Tristan Dacuna, and and this is really cool. Craig actually visited North Korea. And this is hilarious. He actually kept the barf bag or the motion sickness bag from Air Koryo, North Korea's national airline. Uh, next up, we got uh, Budi from Chiang Mai, Thailand. Guys, I know, calm yourselves down, be nice. Whoa, dude, look at the detail on this card. Hi, Barb, it's greetings from Thailand. I used your videos to teach my children. I also sent you some souvenirs. Hope you like them. Dude, you sent so many magnets. I promise you, I will put these on my fridge. Okay, now this pack there's a funny story behind it. This is from the Netherlands. When I went to the post office to pick it up, the guy was like, what is in it? Cause I'm shaking it. It sounds like pills. And he was kind of like, the Netherlands, pills. <laughs> I'm not even joking. The guy working there was a little suspicious. But as it turns out, what? It's this stuff. Hey Barbs, my name is Tice. My dream is to cycle across every single country in the world. Now you've probably already heard of Hagerslag. Yes, I've gotten that before. But there is another variant called Vruchen Hagel. I don't know how to pronounce it. Which is kind of the same, but the sprinkles are all multicolored. It's awesome. Warning, very sweet. I will try this, dude. I will put it on my toast, my buttered toast. I remember you have to butter it first, right? Really appreciate this. This is not pills or drugs. And finally, one last package from Bulgaria. Dude, they loaded it with like everything from Bulgaria. My name is Vladimir and my wife's Andrea. We've been fans almost from the beginning of the show. We are a mixed Bulgarian Romanian family. We also have a wonderful son who is one year and three and a half months old. But you really got specific with that. I talk to him in Bulgarian and Andrea speaks to him in Romanian. We talk to each other in English so it is not clear which language our son will start talking first. That's so crazy. Like I met another couple, the people we stayed with in Italy, Matteo and Katia. Matteo was Italian, Katia was Russian. He would speak Italian to their daughter and she would speak Russian to their daughter. Apparently child psychologists say that's the best way for children to become bilingual if each parent speaks a different language. That's so interesting. We sent you a few tasty items we hope that you'll like. <gasps> Homemade cherry liquor. As you guys know, I'm a liquor guy, not a beer guy, so I, uh, right, I, I seriously gotta try this right now. Just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. 
Oh, sweet and good. It has a punch. Ooh. Oh, Bulgaria. They sent a vial of like pure rose oil. If you guys watch the Bulgaria episode, you'll know that Bulgaria is the world's leader in rose products. Homemade walnut jam. Okay, you know there's love in it if it's homemade. I just... Uh, I, 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 I gotta go to Bulgaria. All right, so that's just about it for the packages and letters. And you know what time it is? It's time for return address contest. I put all of your return addresses in this bag. I pick one out and whoever wins, I send a little gift to. All right, so here are the addresses. I'm just gonna pick one out. I'm not gonna look, I'm not gonna look. Let's see. Uh, your name is Lake and you live in Jordan, Utah, West Jordan, Utah. You just won. So guys, this was really cool. I can't believe how many amazing things I got to cover through you guys this week. Once again, if you'd like to send anything to Ken, Caleb, Keith, or Noah, or any of the other guys on the show, please feel free to do so. You don't always have to send everything to me. And I would love to get their reactions if they get fan mail too. But yeah, you guys rock. Thank you so much for the support for the channel. And I hope you guys are doing well. You've just been flagged. Stay cool, stay tuned.